What's going on everybody? I'm Jason Schroeder with Vital MTB, and today we are checking out Specialized's Gen 2 Levo SL. Specialized was one of the first major brands to venture into the lightweight EMTB segment with their Turbo Levo SL. At a time when most brands were focused on stuffing as much power and range into e-bikes as possible, the Levo SL challenged the notion that electric assist meant accepting a uniquely different on-trail experience. Pushing the narrative lightest EMTB to date, the bike weighed just over 38 pounds, which is still impressive by today's standards. The downside of this narrative was that to achieve such a low weight, the build kits often featured components that limited the bike's abilities. Combined with the geometry package that mirrored the Levo and Stump Jumper at that time, and the first Levo SL lacked confidence and stability in demanding terrain. Since then, Specialized rolled out the latest Stump Jumper Evo that essentially created the benchmark for modern day trail bike performance and geometry. Realizing they had struck gold with the Stumpy Evo, Specialized used the same blueprints to develop the Levo SL Gen 2. However, this time, the narrative was less focused on being the brand with the lightest EMTB, but rather on creating a bike with electric assistance that rides as similarly as possible to a mountain bike. The Levo SL Gen 2 boasts 150mm of rear wheel travel paired with a 160mm fork. The bike ships in a mixed wheeled configuration, but can be set up with dual 29 inch wheels via flip chip and the horse pivot. No custom link is required. The frame uses Specialized's FACT 11M composite technology to achieve a laterally and torsionally stiff frame, and each size receives unique layups to optimize stiffness and weight while achieving a similar ride quality. Glancing over the original Levo SL's geometry chart will quickly take you back to when brands weren't dubbing every bike as long, low, and slack. Desperately in need of some modern angles, Specialized took the Stump Jumper Evo geometry and copy and pasted it onto the new Levo SL. Numbers aren't exactly the same, but they successfully created a bike with increased descending stability, better rider-centric sizing, and improved climbing comfort. The Levo SL is now offered in six sizes using Specialized's S sizing system, which sees lower standover heights across all sizes, allowing riders to pick a frame size based on riding style, not just rider height. Because of this, the S1 only has 144mm of rear travel with a 150mm fork to maximize standover height. The Levo SL comes with two headset cups, giving riders three head angle options. Combined with the flip chip and the shock eyelet that adjust the bottom bracket height by plus or minus 5mm, riders have six possible geometry packages per wheel configuration. The bike comes stock with a 27.5 inch rear wheel, the neutral headset position, and the lower bottom bracket height, giving the Levo SL a 64.6 degree head tube angle, 75.8 degree effective seat tube angle, and 432 millimeter chainstay length. The most obvious change to the Levo SL is the lack of the asymmetric sidearm brace connecting the top tube and seat tube. A debated design element since its introduction, Specialized remained pretty tight lipped on why they ditched the design. The only explanation we received was that the Levo SL uses a lower overall leverage rate to improve small bump and mid-stroke sensitivity, which changed the amount of stress put on the frame and warranted an updated front triangle. If we had to place our bets, we'd wager that Specialized is continuously learning how to maximize frame stiffness in conjunction with the performance of their now classic horse link suspension design, and the Levo SL represents the current iteration of that marriage. Like many specialized mountain bikes, the Levo SL comes with an RX tuned rear shock that was custom valved by the Ride Dynamics team to complement the bike's kinematics. At the heart of the Levo SL Gen 2 is Specialized's all new Turbo SL 1.2 motor that smoothly delivers up to 320 watts of power and 50 newton meters of peak torque. By comparison, the previous SL 1.1 motor produced 240 watts of power and 35 newton meters of peak torque. An obvious and necessary update to keep the Levo SL on par with the power output of other lightweight motors, it also features an all-new gearbox design and two-piece motor housing with an integrated honeycomb structure that better dissipates noise. While motor size has increased, the Levo SL continues to use an integrated 320 watt-hour battery. A 160 watt-hour range extender is sold separately and conveniently slips into the bottle cage, extending the range by 50%. Putting definite values on how long the Levo SL battery will last is complicated as many factors contribute to battery range. Still, Specialized claims that the battery will last for up to 5 hours in eco mode or 7 hours with the addition of a range extender. Eco, Trail, and Turbo remain the default assist modes. The motor characteristics of each mode, including support, peak power, and acceleration can be adjusted within the Mission Control app. Other features include Walk Assist mode for the unfortunate times you have to hike your bike, 
and Microtune, which allows you to change the assist amount in 10% increments. First introduced on the latest Levo and a welcomed update to the Levo SL, the Mastermind TCU remains one of the cleanest and well-executed EMTB data displays. Located on the top tube, the TCU is a one-stop shop for just about any mid-write information you might need, displaying such analytics as assist mode, battery life, speed, distance, cadence, elevation, heart rate, and power. Riders can also customize multiple display screens in the Mission Control app, connect most AMP Plus and Bluetooth devices, and even see jump stats during a ride. Now, you don't have to prove to your friends that you can indeed jump further than them. Lastly, the Mastermind TCU enables over-the-air updates to receive new features as they're developed. Like most e-bike apps, Specialized's Mission Control app offers all the usual motor adjustments and the ability to run system diagnostics or record a ride. One standout feature is Smart Control, which allows riders to input how much battery they want remaining at the end of a ride based on distance or duration, and the system will provide the correct amount of assistance to achieve that goal. Riders can also enter a target heart rate, and the system will then adapt the support it provides to keep you in that zone. Always a point of contention with new EMTBs, the price of the Levo SL is not cheap. The S-Works build we tested retails for $14,000, and while there are two cheaper build options, the entry-level Comp Carbon starts at $8,000. The good news is that all build kits come spec with Fox 36 forks, reservoir shocks, and trail-rated wheels and tires that complement the bike's abilities. And even though weight wasn't specialized as first priority when developing the bike, the Levo SL Gen 2 is still impressively light, with our size large S-Works build tipping the scales at just 39.4 pounds. All right, after a three-day press camp and two additional rides on our home trails, let's jump into some on-trail highlights of the new Levo SL. All right, so I've logged about five rides on the Levo SL so far, and my initial impressions is that it's an incredibly fun bike to ride and rides very similarly to a regular mountain bike. It's super light, it's highly responsive to rider input, it's an efficient peddler, and it can be ridden way harder than most 150 millimeter travel bikes. So starting first with the new 1.2 motor that comes on this generation of the Levo SL. Honestly, haven't uh, gone into the app and messed with tuning it at all. It's been pretty solid right out of the box. Peak power in turbo comes set at only 80%. You can change that in the app, or what I've been doing is using the Microtune feature, which allows you to change the assistance by 10% increments. That in 100% will give you full peak power. Microtune allows me to use the motor and the assistance it provides more kind of like how you would shift gears on a bike. Um, you can still ride this with the three preset modes that it comes with. You can tune those however you like in the app. But for me, it's, you know, I ride with, I've been riding this with less assistance than how like trail mode comes uh, preset with the motor. And I've kind of stayed around like 30 to 60% most of the time. The motor itself, uh, feels super natural. You know, this is a jump from 35 newton meters of torque up to 50 compared to the previous Levo SL. Have I noticed it being more powerful? I think that's a tricky question to answer. I know if I were to ride this, uh, you know, the Gen 2 versus the Gen 1 Levo SL, I'm sure I would notice a difference. You know, riding this bike with people who are on non-e-bikes, it's clearly faster, but if I was riding up a climb, I'm sure I would still get passed by somebody on a full-size e-bike. The way that the power is fed on this motor is incredibly natural. I would say that there's other systems out there that are maybe a little bit more cadence dependent or force you to ride at maybe a less natural, higher cadence. And I think the nature of, you know, just a less powerful e-bike motor in general is going to feel a lot more natural compared to, you know, full power one. It's maybe a bit more of a a gentle push up the hill versus an aggressive push like you can sometimes experience on a full power e-bike. But I also never, I've yet to experience or find a climb or section of trail that I felt like I was underpowered on this bike. You know, your average climbing speed is gonna be a little bit less, but it's kind of all, it's all relative depending on what you're comparing the bike and the motor to. And then the last kind of point to touch on with the motor is Specialized definitely put in some effort to make this system quieter than the previous generation. And again, I think I'd have to ride this back to back with the Gen 1 Levo SL, but it's quiet. I mean, this is probably one of the more silent uh, motor systems that's on the market right now. And, uh, you know, the buzz and kind of hum of it 
is not something that I was, you know, tuning into that much on trail. All right, moving on to battery and range. So, you know, the Gen 2 Levo SL is the same battery as the first generation, same battery size. And I'm not gonna go super heavily in the range. There's so many factors that come into play with how long a battery is gonna last. You know, your rider weight, your pedaling habits, the temperature outside, the terrain you're riding. What I will say is that, you know, Specialized says that they made more efforts to make the motor much more efficient. They're claiming you can get up to five hours of ride time in eco mode. Um, personally, what I've experienced on the few rides I've done is that I'm always ending up at the end of the ride with more battery left than I expected, so, which is awesome. Another kind of huge aha moment for me as I've been riding this bike is that usually when I ride a full size power, a full power e-bike, I'm a lot more concerned about killing my battery and ending up on the trail with a heavy bike and no assistance. But this thing is super light. I mean, we're, we got to test the Uber Fancy S-Works, which weighs in at just over 39 pounds. And that really takes away the fear of getting left on the trail with a dead battery. You can pedal this thing with it off and it's an extremely efficient pedaling platform to begin with. And then you tack on that with the weight of the bike and it's less of a concern for me ending up far out in nature with uh, riding an e-bike that's no longer on. Specialized has changed the geometry of this bike quite a bit from the first generation and it mirrors much more closely the current Stump Jumper Evo. So if you've ever ridden that bike, you'll probably be able to hop on this Gen 2 Levo SL and feel right at home. This bike has, I would say, probably one of the best trail bike geometry packages probably on the market right now. A lot of the changes compared to the first gen is that, you know, kind of your standard, it's longer, it's slacker, you have all the same geometry adjustments that you currently have on a Stump Jumper Evo. So you get, I think with all of the different configurations, there's like 12 different geometry packages you can create. I've only ridden the bike in the stock settings that it comes with. So that's the steer tube set in the middle configuration. And then that is set up with the, I believe, lower bottom bracket height and um, a mixed wheeled configuration. Climbs super efficiently. It's a pedaling position that you can sit in all day and you're not gonna, it's not gonna be beating you up in any way. Um, a nice position to attack climbs, which is definitely something that I do a lot more on this bike than I would a regular Stump Jumper Evo. Just that added bit of power, you're able to take on climbs that uh, you might just kind of settle into a granny gear typically and, and grind up. I think the main takeaway of all of these geometry changes is to really improve the descending performance, the stability, and just the overall confidence that this bike has when you're going downhill. I know the, the first gen Levo SL was kind of flirting the line of, you know, their stump jumper or stump jumper Evo. This bike very clearly is going for the, the do everything trail bike, leaning maybe a little bit more towards descending performance than climbing. The kind of key takeaways of this bike is that it's super stable at speed. It's highly maneuverable and it has not limited the way that I want to uh, ride the bike down the trail. Because it's so light and it's riding so close to how a regular mountain bike feels, um, I haven't had to you know, change my braking points or you know, compromise with the lines I wanna take. On a lot of descents, you know, I'm part way down and I'm often forgetting that I am riding an e-bike. And I think that just really speaks to kind of what Specialized's whole goal was with this, you know, the Gen 2 version of this bike. Kind of give, give riders some extra assistance to ride further, uh, ride more, you know, just be able to do longer rides with some added, you know, electric assistance, but give them a platform and a bike that is going to feel as close as it can to, you know, a regular mountain bike ride you would go for. The final thing I'll touch on with just descending performance is obviously the Levo SL has a new suspension layout. Gone is the crossbar, everybody can rejoice. But honestly on trail, this thing has felt very similar to how the previous Levo SL felt as well as the current Stump Jumper Evo. Um, Specialized did a little bit of work to increase the kind of hold up and mid-stroke support of the bike. And that I did notice. I felt like I was riding 
kind of in you know the middle stroke of the shock the majority of the time which again made the bike super responsive to rider input it kind of i think it it helped me not notice that i was on a you know right around 40 pound bike because my rider input was balanced with a platform that was supportive and kind of giving me that pushback keeping the bike efficient all right so the last thing i want to touch on is everything about this bike that i have not been into which is like pretty much nothing i think uh obviously only being a handful of rides in it's hard to snuff out all of the potential maybe long-term concerns um i think overall specialized is sort of thought of anything that could go wrong they've done their homework they've they've created a bike that i think will be relevant and a ripping platform for a lot of years to come i think my only my only dig is just the price you know we're this is the S Works build. It's the most expensive build that they're launching with, and it's going to retail for fourteen thousand U.S. dollars. The entry level Comp Carbon build is going to retail for eight thousand dollars. So, to even get on this bike when it launches, you're going to have to uh, really cop up some dough. You know, I think in the past you might have only had to like sell one kidney to get on e-bike. We're looking at two kidneys now. So, that's my only sort of dig. I know it comes with the territory and we've all beaten that dead horse quite a bit as far as complaining about the price of e-bikes, but as for as much fun as I've had on this bike, uh, if I wasn't working in the bike industry, I would never be able to have the opportunity to ride it. So that's a little, uh, a little unfortunate. So what's the bottom line with Specialized's Gen 2 Levo SL? I would say that this bike uh, is a nice evolution in Specialized's SL family. The updates to the geometry really increase the stability and confidence of this bike descending while maintaining its dominance as a pedaler. It's incredibly easy to maneuver and move around on trail. You know, it feels more similar to a trail bike than a full power e-bike once you're flowing downhill. It also has all the geometry adjustments you'd ever need to match your riding style or the terrain you have. The increase in motor power does help during really demanding climbs and also keeps the Levo SL on par with other bikes in this lightweight e-bike category. So there you have it, Specialized's new Gen 2 Levo SL. We are definitely creeping closer and closer to a time when e-bikes are starting to ride awfully similar to our regular mountain bikes. I think the new Levo SL makes a pretty strong bid for having one bike to do it all. Let us know in the comments what you think of the new Levo SL and if a lightweight e-bike will someday replace your mountain bike. And as always, you can head to Vital MTB for more mountain bike news. Thanks for watching.